Wheaties presents Night Beat. On stage tonight from Hollywood, Night Beat, another in the Wheaties big parade of exciting half hour presentations. Night Beat. This is Randy Stone. I cover the night beat for the Chicago Star. Stories start in many different ways. This one began with young love and ended with old death. Night Beat, starring Frank Lovejoy as Randy Stone. Right up there on your kitchen shelf, there ought to be a big orange and blue box that says, Wheaties, Breakfast of Champions. Because crammed jammed into that very box is whole wheat energy. 100% whole wheat. Wheaties whole wheat. But it isn't doing you much good all locked inside the box. It's got to be inside of you to help you feel eager and alive and good all over. So first thing tomorrow morning, grab that box, fill that bowl, pour that milk, slice that fruit, and dig down deep and eat and smile and love every bite of Wheaties. This working at night and trying to sleep in the daytime is all wrong. It's getting so lately, my only contact with sunshine is my friendly little bottle of vitamins. <laughs> the kind of tan you get from munching on a fistful of vitamins is nothing, believe me. Tonight, leaving that ever-loving bed was really a chore. I scraped a razor across my face and I bathed my fevered brow with cold water to scatter the cobwebs. And I headed uptown for police headquarters and a couple of one-syllable words with my old friend, Sergeant Kalski. Kalski was on his way in to watch an early evening show-up, and I tagged along. If you've never been in a police show-up room, it's kind of like a little theater. The bad actors are the prisoners filing across the brightly lit stage, and the audience sitting in the dark are hard-bitten, weary detectives who have seen most of the performers too often before, and they know all the dialogue down to the last whimper. The line coming out now were women, an even half-dozen assorted sizes and ages. Okay. Now just stand back against that measurement chart on the wall and face front. Yeah, we know. The usual cross-section on the police blotter of any large city. Shoplifters, thieves, narcotic suspects, husband beaters, and an occasional common garden variety drunk. Uh, you, on the end. What's your name? You've been here before. That's a lie. Never been here before in my life. What's your name? I refuse to say anything without the advice of the proper party. Oh, <laughs> kind of hurt the old girl's feelings there, Kowski. No. Not her, Randy. Her feelings were pickled in alcohol years ago. Uh-huh. How about the young one there? Good looking kid, huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. It doesn't seem to belong somehow. Ah, they all belong, Randy. You can't tell by how they look. Well, that innocent-looking doll with her baby blue eyes. Yeah, I know. I know. Don't tell me. Probably killed her grandmother. <laughs> Only two will get you five. Whatever she did, it's a first offense. That kid looks half scared to death. Hey, you're on the far end. What's your name? You mean me? That's right. I'm sorry I can't see you. These lights are so bright. You're not supposed to see me. Step out a little. Just answer the question. What's your name? Linda Johnson. But I'm here by mistake. <laughs> Oh, yeah, quiet, yeah. quiet. It's the truth. I want to explain. I don't belong here. You'll have a chance to explain in court, miss. This is just a show-up. Why are you in here? I don't know. I just arrived in Chicago this morning, and they arrested me. Well, what did they say you did when they booked you? What was the charge? <laughs> all right, girls, that's all. That's all, matron. Well, as I was saying, Koski, this kid undoubtedly polished off a grandmother with an axe. All right, Randy. So maybe it's the first offense. Maybe even a mistake, like the girl says. But you haven't looked at the book yet to see what the charge says. Well, anyway, can I talk to her? It might be something for me. Sure. Go ahead to the women's division. Tell the matron I okayed it. Maybe it's got something to do with the stars, the zodiac sign I was born under. 
But I've always been a sucker for three things that spelled trouble. That last little drink for the road, a right cross to the jaw, and a girl who still looks pretty with a jug full of tears streaming down her face. You'd think a fella'd know better. Oh, well. I went around to the woman's division for a close-up of the kid with the misty eyes. There was a lady cop at the desk. When I asked her about Linda Johnson, she gave me a funny smile. You're a little late, Randy. She's being released. I just saw her at the show-up. That's right, but she's made bail since. I'll be bringing her out in a minute. What was she in on? Grand theft, I think. Now, let me see. Yeah, that's right. Any details? Swiped a fellow's wallet in a bar. Arresting officer found it in her purse. Ooh, nice kid. <laughs> oh, here she comes now. Uh, would you mind holding my watch while I talk to her? <laughs> <laughs> Better wait till she's released, Randy. Then we won't be responsible. Okay, wait here. Linda Johnson, Meg. Papers clear? Yeah, all taken care of. Personal property release? All signed. You want to open up? Okay. I guess that's it, Miss Johnson. You can go now. You mean you're letting me go? That's right. Until the hearing. Tomorrow morning, 10 a.m., Department 5, released on bail. Oh, but I don't have enough money for bail. They said it was $500. It's all paid. Bonding company posted bail half an hour ago. But there must be a mistake. Who paid it? I don't even know anybody in Chicago. Well, somebody evidently knows you, honey. And pretty well, too. But who? Don't you really know? Oh, no. It's crazy. First I'm arrested and I don't know why, and now I'm bailed out and you won't tell me who put up the money. I'm sorry, Miss Johnson. We don't have any way of knowing that. You can check with the bonding company in the morning. Probably a friend. Or maybe your folks. Oh, no. No, they don't even know where I am. They mustn't ever know. This kid was scared, but good. Her eyes had the bewildered expression of a little girl that's been whipped for something she didn't do and can't understand why. Up close, she was even more beautiful than she'd looked under those glaring white lights in the show-up. Her cheeks were pale, except for that bright flush of red high up. Her eyes were big and soft, and her lips were full and almost trembling with a strange sort of excitement. Hmm, <laughs> what happened? Suddenly I heard gypsy violins in the background. And she was just a gal, and I was just a guy. Oh! It was as though she'd heard my thoughts. Suddenly she swung around and looked straight at me, only then realizing that I was there. Oh, I... Her face turned a gorgeous red, and then she turned quickly and hurried out of the building. Careful. She'll get more than your watch, Randy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll be seeing you. I followed the girl out the front door and down the steps to the street. It was raining. She hesitated a moment, looked around as if she weren't sure which way to go, and then turned towards the corner. I ran and caught up with her. Excuse me. What is it? What do you want? Miss Johnson? But they told me I could go. Yeah, that's right. Then why are you following me? Oh, don't be frightened. I wanted to talk to you. Are you a detective? Are you supposed to follow me? Is that it? No, it's nothing like that. I I just want to talk to you. I don't know you. I don't want to talk to anyone. Oh, look, you're a stranger in Chicago. I just thought I might be able to help you. No, no, you can't. Oh, now, come on. Get under this awning. You're getting yourself all wet. Don't touch me. Leave me alone or I'll call a... You call a cop? Oh. <laughs> come on, you better get under the awning. I was in the show up back there a while ago. It uh, seems like they're not exactly inclined to believe your stories. Then you are a detective. No. Well, who are you? What do you want? It's been like a nightmare since I got off the train this morning. First that man, then the police, and now you. What, what's happening to me? Well, I can't answer for the first two, but the number three boy is a reporter fellow named Randy Stone. A newspaper reporter. Oh, don't say it that way. It's uh, better than selling dope. I should have known you wouldn't understand. Where are you going? Let me alone. Come back here, you little fool. Wait a minute. You're going through a red light. She stepped off the curb against the signal. A big green sedan gunned up the street, throttled wide open, and raced through the intersection. Linda, look out! Get back to the curb. You want to get killed? That car. Did it hit you? No, but the man at the wheel. He, he was the man whose wallet they said. Now, look, lady, look, I'm a real simple fellow. When things come too fast, I get all mixed up. Now, what do you say we start at the beginning and in that doorway so that we don't get soaked? I'm sorry. Name is... Yeah, I, I got that. It's Linda Johnson, and you just arrived in Chicago this morning. Where from? Molina, Kansas. Did you come here alone? Of course I came alone. All right, don't get sore. I just uh, asked a question. But the way you asked it. You said you didn't know anybody in Chicago. 
kid like you shouldn't be running around alone. I am not a kid. Well, I, I meant you're kind of young. Girl your age floating around a big city on the loose. For your discipline. information, Mr. Stone, I am old enough to go wherever I please. Yeah, but not old enough to stay out of trouble, it seems. What about this guy in the green car, this wallet guy? I met him last night on the train. Didn't your mother ever tell you about talking to strange men on trains? My mother has nothing to do with it. If she had her way, I'd never have left Molina. That might not have been a bad idea. Oh, if she hears about this, it'll kill her. You won't put anything in the papers, will you? Oh, so that's it. You ran away from home. I didn't run away. I just couldn't stand living in that narrow little town any longer with nothing to do, no place to go, nobody to talk to. Day after day, being around nothing but... Nothing but... Nothing but people who love you? Yeah, that uh, gets a little boring, doesn't it? All right, so you didn't run away. You left home, and then you met this man on the train. He was pleasant to me. We had a drink together in the club car, that was all. Today I met him again in the lobby of my hotel, and he drove me out to this place, the Rainbow Club. But then I didn't like the way he was acting, and I wanted to leave. But he wouldn't let me. What do you mean, he wouldn't let He just wouldn't let me. And then a policeman came in, and I started to call the policeman, but before I could, Mr. Blake called him and said I'd stolen his wallet. Wasn't there anybody else around? Just the bartender. Well, what did he say? He said he saw me take it out of Mr. Blake's pocket while we were at the bar. And then the policeman found the wallet in your purse. Yes, but I didn't take it. I didn't. Why would anybody want to frame you on a thing like that? Oh, you don't believe me, do you? You don't believe me either. Well, I, I don't know. The whole thing's a little strange. If you're telling the truth that... Oh, why don't kids like you stay home where they belong? Oh, let me alone. Just let me alone. Look, Linda, whether you like it or not, I'm taking you to your hotel. If the driver of that car is the guy you say he is, he's the one that might have gotten you bailed out of the clink. But he had me arrested. Why would he have me bailed out? To get you outside where he could kill you. What? Oh, sister, you're really not old enough to be out in the rain. General Mills is bringing you Night Beat. Starring Frank Lovejoy as Randy Stone. We make quite a to-do about Wheaties being America's favorite whole wheat flakes. Well, why shouldn't we? It's true. People eat more Wheaties than they do any other whole wheat flakes. And we're proud of it. For instance, some of my friends say they like Wheaties because they just plain taste good. Kind of nut sweet and toasty. A, a flavor that keeps on tasting good morning after morning, no matter how often you eat them. Then there are the other folks, like some of the guys I hunt with, and they say they need the energy they get from Wheaties, the whole wheat and the vitamins and minerals. They say they seem to feel better all over all morning after a breakfast that starts with a big bowl of Wheaties and fruit and milk. Now, me, I started getting Wheaties because Jeff, my three-and-a-half-year-old boss, likes them so well. And now that I'm eating them, too, I don't know whether it's because they taste good or because they make me feel good. You know, it'd be kind of interesting to see what you think. So... Next time you plan to have breakfast, dish up the Wheaties and see if it's the good crisp taste or the good on-your-toes feeling you like best. But really, it doesn't matter which, because you're going to get both. Anytime you eat Wheaties, breakfast of champions. And now, back to Nightbeat and Randy Stone. Yeah, like King Solomon once said... Latch on to a pretty girl and you latch on to trouble. And this kid, Linda Johnson, wasn't just pretty. She was beautiful. A genuine 14-carat trouble doll. <laughs> All in one day, she's arrested, bailed out, and almost killed. So, just like the Chamber of Commerce would want me to, I escorted the fair visitor to our city to the safety of her own hotel room. A middle-class business hotel in the Loop. Now that we are in off the street, she seemed a little more relaxed. She shook the rain out of her hair, she turned on the radio, and we sat down on the couch. That, uh, Frank Blake you met on the train. Did you ever seen him before? No. He was a complete stranger. Why would a complete stranger want to kill you? No. Maybe I just imagined that was Frank driving the car. And anyway, it was my fault for walking against the signal. Uh-huh. All right, now let's see. You met him in the club car on the train, and you talked with him a while. And then what? Then we went back to our own cars. I said goodnight at his compartment, then went on through to my own car. Didn't he invite you in? Certainly not. 
He was traveling with someone else. A lady? No, a man. <laughs> you sure about that? Of course. I saw him when Frank opened the door. But please, let's not talk about it anymore. Okay, let's uh, let's talk about you. Can I turn this down a bit? Mm-hmm. Why'd you come to Chicago? Oh, usual reason, I guess. Why does any girl come to a big city? So that she can live a little. So that she can be on her own. Mm, maybe you're not old enough to be on your own. That's what you keep saying, isn't it? Well, come here. What? There. You still think I'm not old enough? Uh, no, you're old enough, but... Uh... What? Oh, so you want to play. Now, you're 22, you read a book, you got some ideas about what life in the big city's all about? That's right. So you're not a little girl anymore, hmm? No, I'm not. <laughs> all right, big girl, I'll play. But don't forget you started this little game, and don't say later you weren't playing for keeps. I won't. Hmm. Well, you see the way the uh, big fellas play, it's, uh, it's a little different. They put an arm around your waist, uh, like this. Mm-hmm. It's pretty hard to get away, even if a big girl wanted to. Mm-hmm. And they hold you closer and closer until you don't think you'll be able to breathe anymore. Mm-hmm. And then his face is so close to yours that you can't see his features anymore. It's just, uh, oh, when they are beautiful. Oh, oh, don't, don't let me go. <laughs> see what I mean, big girl? <laughs> oh, you just wanted to make a fool of me, didn't oh, you? Oh, did I? The door. There's somebody at the door. Yeah, that's right. There's always somebody at the door. Open it. Oh, but you here, won't it look... Oh, certainly not. I'm a guest. You look perfectly respectable, very properly attired. The only thing you're not wearing is your dignity. Oh, now go you... on, open the door. Hmm? Hello. Frank. That's right, inside. Well, well, what do you know? The man in the green sedan. Correct. Also the man named Frank Blake. The same. Also... Also the man with a gun. Ooh, see. So don't move, Oh, huh? please, Frank. Keep your voice down, Linda. All right, mister, what's it all about? Don't you know? No, I'm afraid I don't. Wait mm. then. Oh, oh, no. Don't tell me I fell for that one. It's not funny. Oh, let me see. This is the place where you say, I'm the lady's husband. Is that right? Yeah, that's right, wise guy. I'm the lady's <laughs> husband. Oh, no, Randy, he's lying. Shut up, Linda. And then I'm supposed to ask how much it'll cost for the outraged husband to forget about the whole thing. Oh, no. You're pretty smart, mister. Oh, oh, the Badger game, the oldest game in the world, and I fell for it. Wait till Kalski hears about oh, this. he's lying, Randy. He's lying. <laughs> I said, shut up. Oh. Look out, Miss Libby. Drop it, drop it. Now get your gun. Come back here, you... When he dropped the gun, I kicked it across the room. As he scrambled for it, I scrambled for the door, and I made the street in nothing flat. I was traveling so fast, the night clerk in the lobby could have mistaken me for a flying saucer. And I was sore, not only at them, but myself, for being taken for a sucker. From the z- cigar store in the corner, I telephoned Sergeant Kalski. In less than ten minutes, police were posted at every entrance to the hotel, and Kalski and I were on our way back up to Linda Johnson's room. All right, go ahead, Kowski. Say it. I got it coming. Well, anybody can make a mistake, Randy. Like I say, you can't always tell by a pretty face. Oh, but that badger game, it's the oldest racket in the world, and I fall for it hook, line, and sinker. (laughs) And here I am giving her lectures to go home to her mother. (laughs) (laughs) Very quiet now. How far down the hall? It's the third door. Stay close to the wall. That's it. It's the next one. Let's stand back. He may shoot. I'm back. Open up, Blake. It's the police. Come out, Blake, with your hands up. Blake, Miss Johnson. Okay, Randy, we're going in. But it's open. Come on. Well, there's no one here. Oh, yes, there is. Look, behind the bed. Linda. With a pillow over her head. Ooh, drenched in chloroform. Get rid of it. Here, give me a hand with a wrench. Let me get a window open first. There. Now she's breathing. Linda, come on. Come on, Linda. Come on, wake up. Come on, girl. Take a deep breath. Oh, brother, how stupid can a guy get? The kid was on the level. We almost let her get herself bumped off. What do you mean, we? Oh, oh don't, don't. Linda, it's all right. It's Randy Stone. Oh, where is he? Frank. He tried to kill me. It's all right, Linda. The police are here. You're going to be okay now. Oh, you were right, Randy. He was trying to kill me. Okay. Let's have it straight on this. 
Why did he do it? But I don't know. I don't know. Was he your husband? Oh, no, of course not. Boyfriend who was jealous? No, no. Well, did you pull a job together? Were you holding out on him? Is that the reason? I told you I didn't even know him. Then what have you got on him? What do you know? Nothing. I... Oh, you must know something. There's a reason. There's got to be a reason. Now tell us, miss, why did he do it? I don't know. I just don't know. Oh, take it easy, Kowski. Can't you see she really doesn't know? <laughs> okay, so she doesn't know. But there's a reason. There's always a reason. Unless, unless maybe Frank Blake uh, made a mistake. What mistake? Well, unless maybe Frank Blake had the wrong girl. Unless maybe he was supposed to kill somebody else that he didn't even know and he thought Linda was... Uh... Come again? Yeah, that's right. No, that's no good. Yeah, I better send out a bulletin. Now, what about this guy, Blake? What did he look like? About your size, I'd say. Yeah, that's right, Kalski. About your age, too. 5'11", 180 pounds, 32 years oh, old. Oh, come again. The color of hair? Dark. Eyes? I didn't notice. Uh, Linda? I wouldn't be able to tell. What do you mean you wouldn't be able to... I can't tell colors. I never have been able to. You mean you're colorblind? <laughs> Isn't it stupid? Why, certainly not. <laughs> It'd be much worse if we couldn't tell the color of your eyes. Thank you. Okay, Miss Johnson. I guess we'll have to take it back to headquarters again. To jail? Oh, now, wait a minute. Koski can't take her back to jail again tonight. She's out on bail. Besides, don't you think enough things have happened to her already? But she's not safe here, Randy. It was just lucky we got here this time. It's for your own protection, miss. Oh, Randy, I'm frightened. You were right. I shouldn't have come to Chicago. Yeah, while well, you're here now. Uh, look, Kalski, I know we can't leave her here alone. Uh, how about my place? We can drop her off at my place. You'll be safe there, Linda. We left Linda safely locked in my apartment, and then I went back to headquarters with Sergeant Kalski. For the next two hours, we looked at pictures, full views and profiles of every mobster who had ever been mugged in the state of Illinois. And then I stopped. There he was, staring right up at me off a card. Frank Blake. Only here, he was called Frankie Bolano. Recognize him? Oh, yes, that's him. Who is he? Let's see the card. Part of the old Red Machete gang. Never heard of them. Now, wait a minute. Let me look up Machete. And then... Mabel, Mesa, yeah, Machete. Yeah. Now, do you remember? Yeah, Donald Machete, alias Red Machete, convicted murder first degree, sentenced life July 1941, escaped June 1949, shot by deputies while swimming across Des Plaines River, drowned, body not recovered. Well, he's dead, that doesn't tie in. No. Unless the... Well, unless the guy on the train, that uh, the guy in Blake's compartment... And they thought Linda had seen him. Well, say he didn't drown. Say he got away. They'd been hiding him out for over a year. And now they were uh, moving him. Let me see that card. Height, five feet eight. Weight, 160. Age, 42. Hair red. Eyes blue. Identifying marks. Bright red strawberry mark on... Left cheek. No wonder they thought Linda had spotted him. Only she couldn't have. She's colorblind. Sure, that's why she walked right through that red light tonight. She can't tell one color from another. From there on, it was a breeze. We knew what we were looking for. Frankie Bellano and Red Bacchetti. And with Kalski knowing all the right answers about all the wrong people, we found them both right where we should have looked in the first place. In a private room over the Rainbow Club where Linda had been arrested that afternoon. After I'd seen them safely into a cell, I got on the phone and called my apartment. You know, come to think of it, it was the first time I'd ever dialed my own number. <laughs> a girl answered. Hello? Kind of a sleepy girl with a beautiful voice. What did you say? I, I said you're beautiful, Linda. Who is this? Randy Stone, that, that nice-looking young fellow in whose apartment you've been living. Oh, I must have fallen asleep. Yeah, well, wake up, Linda. It's all over. Oh, yes. Your late uh, friend, Mr. Blake, is now resting comfortably in the city Hoosgau on a slight charge of attempted murder, aiding a penitentiary escapee, harboring a fugitive, and deliberately framing a pretty little girl from Molina, Kansas. Uh, I'm sorry. I mean a pretty big girl from Molina, Kansas. But why, Randy? Why did he do it? Oh, it's a long story, but mainly because you started to holler copper, and he just did some fast thinking, and he hollered first. Do the police know that I didn't... Oh, sure. No more charges. They even threw your records away. Great little fixer, this stone fella. You ought to get to know him better. I want to. Are you coming home soon? Oh, no, no. Not not my place. You know, uh, 
Neighbors. Hmm? But I want to see you, Randy. You've been so wonderful to me. Oh, sure, but... Don't you want to see me? Oh, I do, Linda, sincerely. I, uh... Look, I'll tell you what. You hop in a cab right away, meet me on the corner of Dearborn and LaSalle. Can you remember that? But why? Oh, never mind why. It's, uh, 4.30 now. How long will it take you? No time at all. But my clothes, I haven't changed. My bag's still at the hotel. I didn't even unpack. But never mind. I'll pick it up for you on the way. You'll hurry? Oh, yes. I'll hurry, Randy. Swell. I'll, uh... I'll have something for you. Hi, what kept you? What do you mean, what kept me? <laughs> Never mind. Here, keep the change. Sure. <laughs> Thanks, Mac. Oh, Randy, I hurry. Hi. I'm not frightened anymore. Swell. And I'm so happy. Hold me, Randy, close. Here? Uh, don't mind me, folks. <laughs> oh, you go away. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we going, Randy? Uh, this is it. Right here. Oh, but this is the train station. Uh-huh. And you said you'd have something for me. Oh, yeah. Here. A ticket? One way. To Molina, Kansas. Well, yes, uh, Mom, I did the right thing, all right. I made the noble gesture, and now I feel pretty good inside. I feel like a big man. Hmm. I feel like a big chump, if you want to know the truth. Who am I to suddenly get so noble where a beautiful girl is involved? Oh, well. Maybe if I rationalize long enough, I can kid myself into thinking she had to go home because she was running away from some unfinished business. You try to run away from things, but you can't ever run away from yourself. Who knows, maybe someday I might try running away myself. Hmm. Wonder what it's like in Molina. Copy, boy. You are listening to Night Beat on the Wheaties' Big Parade. Say, Frank Lovejoy, before you get away, I wanted to tell you that was a swell show. Well, thank you, Frank Martin. It's nice to hear. I, uh, I think you do a mighty solid job on the commercials, too, you know. Only I, I think if I were working on that end of the show, I'd, uh, well, I'd tell the folks... You're absolutely right. Frank Lovejoy. I'll make a note to be sure and say that Wheaties are 100% whole wheat, just about the crispest, nicest way there is to get all the good nourishment whole wheat has to offer. Uh, any other suggestions? Well, you, you certainly shouldn't forget that Wheaties... Well, I should say not. They're breakfast of champions. Yeah, yeah, and then that part about their... Yep, America's favorite whole wheat flakes. Uh, that's an important point. Uh, anything else, Frank? Well, I think you ought to tell people that right, they can... Right, right. They can get Wheaties at their grocers any time. Say, Frank, thanks for the help. That was fine. Well, think nothing of it, old boy. Good night. Nightbeat, starring Frank Lovejoy, is produced and directed by Warren Lewis and edited by Larry Marcus. Tonight's story was written by Warren Lewis with music by Frank Worth. The part of Linda was played by Barbara Fuller. In tonight's cast were Gerald Moore, Jeanette Nolan, Lou Krugman, and Francis Cheney. Listen next week at this same time and every week as Randy Stone searches through the city for the strange stories waiting for him in the darkness. And this is the Wheaties man, Frank Martin, inviting you to listen also on Tuesday, that's tomorrow night, to the Penny Singleton Show on the Wheaties Big Parade. See you then. Nightbeat comes to you from Hollywood. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.